Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 8 of topic 11, Organic Chemistry. Let's learn about condensation polymerization. In condensation polymerization, two different monomers join together while losing small molecules like water. Each monomer contains two functional groups, one located at each end. The primary difference between addition and condensation polymerization is that addition polymerization occurs without the formation of byproducts, while condensation polymerization produces small molecules, often water, as byproducts during the polymer formation. Here are the two polymers we are going to discuss that are made from condensation polymerization polyamides and polyesters. Nylon is a polyamide formed by the condensation polymerization of a dicarboxylic acid with two COOH groups and a diamine with two NH2 groups. These boxes represent everything between the functional groups like the carbon chains. During this process, amide linkages are created, releasing water. In condensation polymers like nylon, small molecules, example water, are produced during polymerization, unlike addition polymers where no byproducts are formed. So this is the repeat unit of a polyamide from a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine. Each repeat unit in nylon contains an amide linkage, which is formed by the reaction of the amine group from the diamine and the carboxylic acid group from the dicarboxylic acid. So we just saw how to deduce the repeat unit of a condensation polymer from a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine to a polyamide. For the reverse process, that is polyamide to monomers, we just identify the amide linkages in the polymer. Then break the amide linkages to get the original dicarboxylic acid and diamine monomers. Remember, in condensation polymers, the repeat units come from two different monomers, each contributing a part of the polymer chain. The result is a long chain polymer with strong bonds. So this is the structure of nylon, a type of polyamide, formed through the condensation polymerization of a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine. PET is a polyester formed by the condensation polymerization of a dicarboxylic acid with two COOH groups and a diol with two OH groups. You are not required by your syllabus to know the full name for PET. Each repeat unit in PET contains an ester linkage or COO linkage formed by the reaction of the hydroxyl group from the diol and the carboxylic acid group from the dicarboxylic acid. During this reaction, a water molecule is formed. We learned how to deduce the repeat unit of a condensation polymer from a dicarboxylic acid and a diol to a polyester. For the reverse process, that is polyester to monomers, we identify the ester linkages in the polymer. Then we break the ester linkages to obtain the original dicarboxylic acid and diol monomers. So PET can be converted back into its monomers. 
This allows PET to be repolymerized to form new PET. This recycling process helps reduce plastic waste and supports the sustainable use of resources by enabling the reuse of the same material multiple times. This is the structure of PET, a type of polyester formed through the condensation polymerization of a dicarboxylic acid and a diol. Next, we will describe the differences between addition and condensation polymerization. Addition polymerization involves alkene monomers or unsaturated compounds that contain a carbon-carbon double bond. Condensation polymerization involves two different monomers with two different functional groups such as a dicarboxylic acid and a diol or a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine. The double bonds in alkene monomers break, allowing the monomers to link together without the loss of any atoms. The polymer forms through the opening of these double bonds. Condensation polymerization involves a condensation reaction where each time two monomers join, a small molecule, typically water, is lost as a byproduct. So, in addition polymerization, no byproducts are formed during the process, only the polymer is produced. And in condensation polymerization, a small molecule such as water is released during the polymerization process. In addition polymerization, the polymer consists of a chain of identical repeating units derived from a single type of monomer. In condensation polymerization, the polymer consists of repeating units formed by two or more different types of monomers. Examples of addition polymerization is polyethene from ethene monomers. And for condensation polymerization, nylon is a polyamide and PET is a polyester. Next, plastics. Plastics are made from polymers. Plastics are non-biodegradable and chemically unreactive. That means they do not break down and can last for hundreds of years in the environment. This makes disposal difficult as they can pile up in landfills and natural areas. The environmental challenges caused by plastics include disposal in landfill sites, accumulation in oceans, and formation of toxic gases from burning. So, discussing disposal in landfill sites, Plastics make up a big part of what we throw away in landfills. They take a very long time to break down, so landfills can fill up with plastic waste. This can harm the land and soil and take up valuable space. Accumulation in oceans Plastics often end up in the ocean through rivers and waste disposal. This is bad for sea animals because they can swallow plastic pieces which can hurt or kill them. Plus, plastic in the ocean can damage marine habitats and coral reefs. Formation of toxic gases from burning Burning plastics releases harmful and toxic gases and pollutants that are bad for people and the environment. This increases air pollution and can lead to long-term health issues. Finally, let's discuss proteins. Proteins are a type of polymer formed through condensation reactions. Proteins are natural polyamides. They are formed from amino acid monomers. Each amino acid has a general structure represented as follows. 
amino acids are molecules that contain both an amine group and a carboxyl group. There are 20 different types of amino acids. Each of these amino acids have a unique side chain shown by the letter R. We will use these rectangles to represent the different types of amino acids. Remember, there are 20 common types of amino acids. The rectangles illustrate the various types of amino acids which share a similar general structure but have different R groups. Each rectangle shows a different amino acid. Let's learn how to draw the structure of proteins. Proteins are formed through the condensation polymerization of amino acids which contain both amine and carboxylic acid functional groups. Proteins are formed when amino acids link together through peptide links creating a long chain. Remember Previously in polyamides, we called the link an amide link. In the case of proteins, the amide links are called peptide links. The formation of a peptide link involves a condensation reaction between the amino group of one amino acid and the carboxyl group of another, releasing a molecule of water. So, this is the structure of a protein. A type of polyamide formed through the condensation polymerization of amino acids. You may notice that the positions of the functional groups alternate between the top and bottom in each amino acid link. That concludes topic 11 organic chemistry. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Be sure to check out our other videos from our playlists. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye!